Greetings, everybody. Welcome to Baseball Training for Older People, BTOP Live. I'm your host, Harry Doyle. I'm just kidding with you. Uh, this is, uh, nobody's watching right now anyway, so uh, who cares, right? So anyways, no, uh, guys, uh, thanks for being on this episode of BTOP Live. I'm Josh Nichols. Uh, uh, looking, been looking forward to this conversation we're about to have for a long time. And so, in fact, we tried to have this conversation um, about two or three weeks ago, or maybe four weeks now, and ran into some tech difficulties, but I think we figured it out, and I'm happy to welcome back uh, one of my best friends in the world, uh, Douglas Evans uh, from Los Angeles, California, and we will be talking about the mental game of baseball. And so, uh, obviously, uh, I think most of us would agree that the most challenging part of the game itself as uh, the the late and great Yogi Berra said, that baseball is uh, 90% mental and the other half is physical, right? And so, anyways, uh, I think most uh, baseball players would agree that most of the challenges that come with playing baseball happen uh, in our heads, you know, it's because of our mental game. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's at 40 years old, 41 years old, it's still happening to me for sure. So, um, but just real quickly, let's take care of a couple things that we like to go over uh, in the beginning, which is number one, uh, if you're watching this video, uh, a rebroadcast on YouTube or even on Facebook, I really would encourage you to please check out in the description of your video, uh, you will see a link to the uh, to the BTOP Legends group, so the Baseball Training for Older People Legends group, uh, a really fascinating group, and that is where this video airs, this is where the show airs live, and if you want to watch this live and partake live and, and join in and ask questions and things like that, uh, maybe even be on the show yourself, that's how you get in it and get to be a part of it. Uh, also, if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're watching this live, make sure you go over to YouTube, subscribe to that channel. I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Uh, I want to uh, bring on uh, my buddy Douglas Evans uh, from Los Angeles, California. Hey, there you are, man. Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good, good. Good to be here. Thanks for the intro and sorry I missed it last time. We had a little tech difficulty, but we're here today. Well, to begin with, Douglas, I, I did introduce you uh and and tell people um that uh that you were you know you and this is true you know um you're the were the inspiration for all this uh at least for the beginnings of it you know the the creation of uh of what we now call btop you know mm -hmm. um and it was based and it was based upon when i came out to visit you in la and i i i came over to your house and and then you, I noticed you got, you had like a, a batting net and tee and a pitch back and a whole setup in your backyard. And then of course you were, you were going to church every, once a week, which you and I know church is. Baseball is not, Central, shout out to my buddies, I, Alex and TJ. I go there three times a week actually. So there's three cool. times a week. Jeez. Oh yeah, we hit. You're yeah. represented on your hat. That Baseball Central, right? Yeah. Hope ACDC's lawyers just take a break tonight. They don't need any more money. Yeah, <laughs> that's a cool logo. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it, was a of, it, was of, it was fun having you out there and, and hitting with you and uh, playing some catch and and uh, yeah. yeah I, I'm not sure I can take credit for your whole uh, B top operation here, but uh, if you insist, I'll I'll just go with it. But it's, you were uh, the inspiration for sure. And, <laughs> um, and uh, just real quickly, um, uh, Baseball Central's got they they survived the pandemic and everything. Oh yeah, yeah, they're they're going full tank. Um, they're good guys. Yeah, T.J. Ronell owns it. Uh, he's a great guy, and and then the guy I work with Alex Angiano. Um, he, he's been teaching for a very long time. They're they're great guys, and uh, Ryan and the Heath over there is a lot of good, a lot of good dudes. So well, um, just to kind of give people some context, and then I'm going to ask you about your story in baseball. Um, but just to give some people some context is that you and I both have background in mental health, right? And so mm -hmm. you have a facility in LA that you own, co-own, um, mm -hmm. right? And, um, and I have one here in Oklahoma City that I co-own, and that's how we initially met was through our industry. Tell tell everybody a little bit about 
what your history is with baseball and then ultimately amateur baseball and your training that you do. Okay. Well, I mean, it's pretty simple. I, I mean, I, I'm from Ohio. I played, um, you know, little league pony league where we called it out there. I can't remember. And, uh, it didn't, I think I around somewhere around ninth grade, I basically stopped playing, never lost my love for the game, but just made my attention interest went out elsewhere. And, um, and I, I would always just go to batting cages wherever I was, you know, just because I love to barrel up a ball. And who doesn't like that feeling in your yeah. hands? And so, uh, you know, I always thought, yeah, I'll probably play the game again somewhere recreationally or in some capacity and just didn't really know quite how it was going to work out. And after I graduated from Ohio State, I moved out here to L.A. And, um, you know, just go around various batting cages we have here uh, once in a while. Just hit some. And then I was talking to a guy at a facility and he's telling me there's all these men's leagues, which I had no idea. I mean, on any given weekend in LA, there's probably a hundred adult amateur games being played on different law, uh, you know, ball fields, you know, JUCOs and high school fields. I had no idea all this was going on. So then I guess, uh, anyway, just started meeting some people and talking about it, found out about leagues. And so I tried out and got on a team and, was ended up on about three teams at once for a little while in 08, 9, 10, something like that. And my business blew up and uh, my shoulder got a little tweaked from throwing. And um, I kind of just went back to training in the gym and hitting and throwing and stuff like that. And uh, meeting friends for um, outfield practice and stuff, taking a lot of fun going in, in the on, in the parks and during the weekdays when no one's on them because our, our parks are very crowded here in LA and high demand. So, um, you know, and now I'm in a place where I think my business is going to make a little more space for me to uh, get back on a team and, and play some ball. So that's really kind of, I mean, I guess like everybody here that just loves the game and however good at it you are, you still want to play it, you know, and I'm no superstar by any means, um, pretty average, but I just love doing it. And, uh, yep. so, and I also had, used to have a, I was a massage therapist for 18 years and a, a training facility in LA here. And so, did a lot of sports specific things, uh, a lot of single leg exercises, a lot of balance work, a lot of core work, uh, all that stuff that uh, you rely on when you're playing any sport. Uh, so that's some of the training you saw me doing or cable machines. I love those and uh, anything that challenges your balance and functional work, you know, gets you off balance a little bit. So I was just doing these rotations, these core rotations on my cable machine, I think had it loaded up pretty good and just doing these rotations with my obliques. And you're like, what the heck is this? So it's just, uh, yeah. apparently it's apparently sparked a whole Facebook group. Pretty hilarious. <laughs> so here we are. So, yeah. yeah. I was going to call Douglas Evans Academy, but. Yeah. Uh, don't get excited. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're not selling any memberships. So, yeah. That's so, you know, I just, just love the game. And, um, and I, and I was just a, a fun extra that I found out that you liked it too. I didn't, I had no idea. I didn't know you played. So, yeah. Well, on that front, I would also say that uh, must be, um, we love this game and we study the game. We also, I would say we're both pretty good at what we do for a living. Yeah, you can say that. Yeah. You're, 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 you're a champ. I'll, I'm, I'm doing okay. No, come on. <laughs> I, I'm I, I, out of, for for the sake of boundaries, I'm gonna, I'm I'm not gonna mention uh, your clinic or anything like that. But I I do want to tell people, guys, it's, uh, it's like it's like mecca, in my mind. <laughs> well, thank you. Go I work with my I work with my wife. She's a superstar. Um, yeah. I make I make sure her stuff works out fine. Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah. But but thank you. yeah. So so on that note, just. You know, you, 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 but you've been around the world of mental health for so long now that it's very easy. It's just, just coming at you from a, from a, a, from a clinician. One, you are married to a clinician and mm -hmm. two, you have a good friend now that's a clinician. And, uh, it's easy to talk to you about mental health stuff because you, I think you understand that world really well. Uh, and, uh, you understand the, the, the clinical thought processes, you know, you sure. might not treat people directly, but, uh, you definitely understand the processes but just for you. Uh, what's the biggest, you know, that you recognize the way so far, the biggest psychological hurdle that you have to really be conscientious about when you're involved in this game? Well, um, I think it's changed a lot. Uh, but, 
Let's see. I, I mean, the, the main one is just not doubting myself so much, you know, or second guessing myself, thinking like if the coach needs to pull me out and play somebody else or whatever it is to not get too bummed out. Or sometimes I'd be judgmental, like, well, hey, this guy replaced me. He's not even as good as me. He doesn't even hustle. Like, why is he in there? You know, all that squirrels mm -hmm. in the head, all that chatter that we're prone to do. And it just has us not being present with what's really going on. And yeah. the best thing you can do, I mean, every pitch, the game has changed, right? It's a different, something else is happening on the field. Situation just changed, the count changed. And I think if I point to what's, I think makes a successful players are always reading, if they're in the batter's box, let's say, they're reading the fielders once again, the count, the pitcher's tendencies, the whole thing. What does their team need for production right now? Do we need a base hit? or a triple or a home run or, or a bunt, right. you know, and being willing to just be selfless and go give it to your, for your team. Right. And, and so you, first you gotta be present enough to actually read what's going on and be there. So I think for me, um, it's partly acquiring those skills to read the situation better. That's that actually gave me a lot of confidence to calm down internally. Mm -hmm. So prior to having some of that, yeah, I just didn't quite know where I was on the field, so to speak, right. relative to what my team needed. So then I would load on, you know, let's say as the, as the count got deeper, I might be getting more nervous sometimes. And I often, I have a pretty good eye, so my counts would go longer and I'd foul some off and it wouldn't, you know, a really good player you, is using all those pitches, you know, and, and kind of picking the pitcher apart, you know, and really playing with them. Right. So those have been some of my, tendencies and you know as i come back out to play i really want i think i'm going to do better with all that and want and now i have my eyes on working on that stuff so right so yeah, yeah you kind of reflected on something that i deal with too like i'm more likely to enter into a, de a defensive slump than an offensive slump so mm -hmm. in other words like because you're kind of talking about like do i you're dealing with this question of like do i really belong here Right. Yeah. Am I good enough to be here or how much longer are they going to keep me or whatever? Right. Yeah. Like, it, and it doesn't take many mistakes to like, you can have one bad game and mm -hmm. then, thing you know, you're thinking like, I don't even belong here anymore, you know? And then something that's been hitting me with it too, is that, you know, uh, I got, I used to do, do CrossFit pretty heavily several years ago and I got hurt. Mm -hmm. And in the, because of that, I, uh, you know, I got depressed. I gained a lot of weight, so I'm, I'm way more over uh, heavier than I've ever been in my life. Uh, I uh, I have uh, uh, still uh, some issues with my back because of that injury, mm -hmm. and then on top of that, I'm getting older. You know, and I'm watching these younger guys come in, and so, you know, I can make one mistake out on that field, and I am in the worst mental place. I'm thinking, yeah. I'm too old to be out here. I Oh, on top of that too, la you know, a couple uh, last year, um, I got hit uh, by a ball in my leg and got in, and it, it created deep vein thrombosis, which is the scariest form of of a blood clot you can get, right? And so I had that going, like that fear, like just all these m messages saying, "Man, you're yeah. not you're out here, hang it up." Yeah, yeah, and, exactly. And I mean, it, and it really, uh, it really jacks with me and I've had to work really hard. And I was just curious, I mean, you were kind of getting into that. Do you have any specific, uh, um, <clears throat> we had talked about before in a previous conversation about how baseball players get teased for having superstitions, but superstitions really, it's really not superstitions. It's really a routine that we yeah. like to do as baseball players to get into the right mental space because mm -hmm. of how the brain and neural pathways work. Right, right. So we, trigger those right neural pathways by doing the same behaviors the exact same way over and over again. Mm -hmm. So that when I step onto that field, I am in the space where I'm not letting this uh, extraneous information creep in. that's going to affect my game. Right. Right. Or less what, of it. Yeah. What do you, what are your techniques for keeping that extraneous information out so that you can be focused on what you're there to do? Well, I think there's two things. One is, just to notice that I'm making an assumption that somebody thinks I shouldn't be on the field or whatever, you know, if I'm having doubt, we all have doubts, you know, people say they don't or lying to themselves. So, you know, you get up a good enough amount of competition, you're going to question yourself and your abilities, right? We right. all do that. And it's a funny game because the spotlight is on, you know, basically one or two people at a time. It's basically the pitcher, then the batter, 
and you know a fielder and it's very obvious everybody's looking at what you're doing right so there's a, there's a pressure to that and so it's easy to doubt oneself so the first thing i do is or the thing i would recommend also and is think about oh wait a minute okay so maybe that play didn't go the way i want to i didn't i didn't realize i was like the best going to be one of the best fastballs of this a b right and now i'm feeling a little behind or whatever or i didn't take advantage i didn't read the sign right i didn't take advantage of something an opportunity on the field and so you know if you're prone to thinking oh what am i doing out here or they're gonna cut me or not need me on this team or whatever the self-doubt is or i'm not good enough or some replay of some past game or who the hell knows but i think the first thing is to say well that's an assumption that the other people are having a problem with that like let let the team tell you that your production isn't uh, worthy or good enough. Don't, don't basically bet against yourself. Don't start negotiating with yourself and taking yourself out of the game because then you will suck and then somebody will say, oh, sorry, we don't need your services. So that's one is just to notice like, oh, okay, that I just made an error or I didn't do what I wanted to do in that situation. But what all that means and where I, you know, letting that play out it's just like you gotta cut that off. That is negative and toxic and it's it's built is built on no real facts. And just say, okay, that's the mind just making stuff up because that's part of what it does. That's the nature of it. Mm -hmm. I can't let myself fall down that rabbit hole. So that's the first one. Say, okay, that's a rabbit hole. We don't have to go there. We do not have to keep telling ourselves we suck and we can't play and blah, they don't need me and the other guy's gonna take my position. Mm -hmm. The other one is I think the more po so that's kind of like how to dam up the negative. I think to go in a positive direction is like, okay, that's over and it's gone forever. But this next pitch is kind of a new game. So what can I do in this next pitch to be of high value to my team? Right? Am I in ready position when my when my pitcher releases the ball if I'm on defense, right? Am I watching what's going on? Am I looking at this batter? Do I notice that he changes stance somehow because he's thinking about what kind of hit he's trying to get, right? What are, what are my other buddies on the field doing? Did they just shift in some way? Do I need to do something to adjust for that, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, I'm here now to make a contribution, right? Or, okay, that was a great fastball. Now it's like 2-2 two, two, or, you know, 1-2. And I could really, you know, get on myself about, oh, I blew this. And now this guy's going to eat my lunch with, a, you know, some garbage off speed and get the K. You know, yeah, you can, you know, and, and next thing you know, you're swinging a shit in the dirt because you just, you gave yourself, gave up, right? But instead say, okay, well, okay, the pitcher's ahead of me right now. What am I going, you know, maybe I need to choke up, take one more technical swing, check, check mm -hmm. the fielders one more time. Just, just look at where can I make a contribution now? So those are the two things I would do. Yeah, I noticed like on younger players, uh, like in, uh, uh, players my kids age you know they you can tell when they're defeated at the plate like you can tell mm -hmm. like that like they can be get that second strike on them and then their whole demeanor changes and you know they're they're goners they're just they're just they're getting struck out or they're gonna you know they're just not gonna perform well because they they, they struck themselves they're striking themselves out and the catcher and the pitcher are looking at see it too everybody sees it but yeah I think uh, grown-ups are a little bit better at hiding it, but I think the same thing happens to us internally for sure. And oh yeah, can't get it. it it's there's strange magic of self-fulfilled prophecies, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. and um, once once you're convinced that that you have that you've lost that battle, the the hard part is is that you know you you if you if you're all you're doing is going. Uh, trying to fight against the voice in your head so if the voice is saying oh you're doomed you're doomed you're like no i'm not doomed no i'm not doomed well just saying just pushing back is not going to help it's going to make it worse right. Mm -hmm. right so i think we we got to have a a system each and it's going to be different for each individual player you got to have something that works for you to calm that voice not to fight against the voice right, right? right. You remember that those parts of your brain they're, they're there to help you is is as frustrating as they can be, you know, there's a part of my brain that says, what are you doing out here, man? I don't want you to die from a, from a pulmonary embolism because you got a, a blood clot in your leg from getting hit by baseball, <laughs> you know? Right. And I need, and if I'm just telling that voice to shut up, it's just going to get louder. Mm -hmm. 
we got to be some somewhat compassionate toward ourselves to try to get to calm that voice to say, you know, it's okay. It's okay that I'm out here, you know? Sure. Um, I have my own unique way. Um, it's actually a way that I, I learned in therapy. So I, I, this isn't a therapy plug for people, but I will say that if you are having a really hard time with it, man, go seek out a, a counselor that specializes in sports performance or, I mean, we have those all around here, but even counselors that don't, you know, most of us can, can do, uh, most of us know what you're dealing with when it comes to that, because it, it's uh, not unique to sports usually. Right. And so go seek out somebody to see if they can help you dive into, you know, that part of your psyche to uh, kind of see what's going on. That's what I did. I, it wasn't even for baseball. It was for other things a few years ago. But this, the techniques that I learned, and I'm a therapist, you know, you think I would have known mm -hmm. this. But the techniques that I learned in there, I, I do those at, before every game. I sit down before uh, before I go out there. I close my eyes. Uh, I don't even know if my teammates notice I do it. You know, I just sit there by myself just for a few minutes and I breathe. And then I start dialoguing with myself because there's like a, a little guy inside there that I can go talk to that I need to show up during these games. And I can't, I don't want to be Josh the dad or Josh the therapist, or Josh the husband. I want to be Josh the badass ball player. That's who I need to be while I'm out there. Right. Yep. So, so you're summoning like that persona, right? That it, baseball yeah, it is. I know it sounds, I mean, to you, that sounds normal, right? Because of what we do for a living. But people listening to this, it might sound a little crazy, but hey, man. I think, I think all competitors do it, actually. I yeah. mean, I was, it was funny. I was talking to the guy I hit with, uh, Alex, um, and he was talking to that, talking to me about that, like, you know, you can't really be the same guy. It's it's basically warfare. It's like, you know, more or less. And somebody's trying to win, and somebody's gonna lose, right? Every every A B, somebody wins and loses, you know. Sure. And and uh that works on our heads, especially mostly most ball players are males. So, you know, men are uh, we don't wanna be on the losing side of that. And the problem is that if we get too uptight about losing, then we're actually don't have our best resources available to win and i and so yeah I, kind of my thing is like if i hear that chatter i say okay that's noise that will not be helping me beat it but you're also right like you got to step into that larger persona of who are you as the competitor right exactly. and and kind of maybe you know people call it swagger confidence they you know put some extra decoration on their uniform in some way, you know, yeah. it kind of puts them in a role. I mean, just putting the uniform on tells you you're going to go do something different right now. Right. You know? Yeah. So I think that's a great one um, to kind of adopt that. Yeah. What are that killer instinct that you need to, to that gets you in your zone. And then, um, you know, coming back to just keep firing that back up. Um, yeah. And we do that in our, for most of us that have professional jobs, you know, mm -hmm. we do that in our jobs all sure. the time, you know, like we can have the worst kind of crap going on in our personal lives and we step into our, our place of business and we turn it on. Right. And, and, right. Not, and there are times though that it start, you can start to feel like I don't, I kind of feel that doubt creep in and then but we have our ways of working ourselves out of that. And we, we just got to figure out how to do that, do that for this game. Um, because it, it's basically, I think the same type of thing going on, you know, mm -hmm. if you can realize you're a badass in your, in your place of employment, how come it's so hard to realize that, that if, if you're suited up on a team and you're playing a game that's got widely, that's widely considered one of the hardest activities to do in any sport, Right. That you don't deserve to be there. I mean, the fact that you suited up and walked out there is more than what most people can ever do with that game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. Are we getting any comments? Uh, anybody have questions about this kind of stuff? Or does it resonate? For, I don't know if there are any. People, I can't see them. Uh, if you guys are watching, let me give a shout out real quickly. We got uh, Chris Gallo uh, Jr. from New York. Ron Adante, I said earlier. Uh, Eddie Lamar from New York City. Jeremiah Batla, he's going to be on here next week. We're going to be talking about pitching at 40. Um, mm -hmm. He's a real interesting guy, so I'm going to have him on. Uh, Anthony Harlem, 
Um, we do have a comment from Ron, but you guys that are watching, feel free to uh, ask any questions that you have about, or just uh, what we're, if you have a question for them too, Douglas, feel free to ask. Well, just cause I was thinking like, I think this is a very common thing that, you know, like you said, like you might go into your professional life, whatever your job is and feel like I got this and I'm a badass at it. Right. And I, and I own this, I'm doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so why, and I think kind of your, there's a question in what you're saying, like, well, why then do we have difficulty finding that on a baseball field? And it might just be how infrequently, you know, if you play like most people, like probably play one game a week, it might be some of that. So frequency, like getting out of your parent role, your job role, your whatever role and onto the field, right? Because you don't live it day in, day out as a professional. Uh, there may be something there. Um, but also, you know, the work the, the on the field is very tangible. I mean, the game is loaded with metrics, right? It has been forever. I mean, on base percentage, RBI, slugging percentage, batting average, you know, ERA, it's errors, it's all being counted and measured and scored. And so I think, you know, a really dangerous thing is comparing oneself to others. And yet, you know, where you are in the batting lineup and everything else is a comparison to who else there is to play that day. So it's a very yeah. tri tricky thing mentally. So I think everybody struggles with it, whether they want to admit it or not, you know, because it's like at the end of the end of the nine innings, somebody won, somebody lost, somebody goes home with bragging rights, somebody got their uniform dirty and like did some big plays and feels huge. And other people are feeling like, you know, why did I come out here, you know, and that really works on your head and it's a slow paced game. So if you did something you didn't like, you're going to have to live with that for three innings probably you know, before you can do something else to like make up for that. Right. Um, so and, yeah, I, I think the game is different than our professional life or where, because there's usually a lot more chances to make it up and it's not so starkly obvious what you did or didn't, didn't do right or did wrong. Right. And so it's just, it's just a tendency of it's, it's baked into the game that our heads are going to spin this mm -hmm. and tell us we're not good enough to be here or we should hang it up or somebody else has got more than we do or mm -hmm. all that comparison stuff. It's a, it's, it's a, I think it's a bit of a mental trap. Um, so it, I think recognizing is that is one thing, turning on the persona is another, you know? Yeah. One thing yeah. I tell, like I've been teaching my, my 11 year old is that it seems real hard on himself right now. Um, mm -hmm. I tell him like, you know, what, you know, what coaches are looking at, too, is not just how you're performing or, or the lack thereof. You know, they're also watching how you handle bad performances. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you right. Know? So, yeah. And uh, if if you're coming in the dugout and you're spending, you know, the next three batters just slamming your stuff around and, you know, and, and you're then then you're communicating to everybody what you truly think about yourself mm -hmm. and that's not going to generate confidence in other people. Right. And cause one of the uh, adages that I use a lot uh, that uh, is in, in my practice and in baseball is uh, what, what people, people will tend to believe about you, what you believe about you. Sure. You know, and then to tack on to that, what people really, think about you is none of your business anyways you know yep. until 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 your coach or manager or player decides to make it your business it's none of your business right so until they come up to you and say josh you suck you know that's what i think of you that's none of my business so anything that's happening in terms of that type of language it's on me and and if i believe that about me it's going to manifest in my in my body and communicate that to to other people and that's why there's that strange magic and self-fulfilled prophecy because if i'm really having a hard time believing in myself other people are, i'm not generating any confidence in my teammates so right. how we handle our slumps our errors our strikeouts you know that's really important uh in moving forward yeah yeah atlet does have a comment uh he said i watch hitters when they throw their bats and the next time they come up, I attack the zone. Uh, he's a pitcher. So he said, I attack the <laughs> uh, built in an advantage against him. So there Bingo. you go. They're, they're already got at least one strike, yeah. you know? Yeah. That's, that's, a, you know, I call it racing myself or getting ourselves out or taking ourselves out of the game. I mean, it's a battle 
And there's a lot of it that all of us are not having a lot of success with. Like it's usually tilted. It depends how you measure success also. That's another, I think, mental trick. You can find contributions in the smallest things if you're willing to look at it. But if you only measure, you're doing it right. If you like, you know, pitch the, you know, if you had, if you struck the dude out on three pitches and you, you hit a double or better. And if that's the only version, if that's your only, or, or made double plays and that kind of standard is your idea of doing a good job, then there's going to be a, a long, a big desert of times and stuff yeah. on the field where you're not going to be feeling good about yourself. And I, again, I think it's just another mental trap. Yeah. And I think we're, we're kind of prone to it, but yeah. I, I just think we got to just steer away from that. I think that's, that's where you, I, yeah, I kind of, I don't know if I totally disagree with you or, or whatever, but I would say, when you say you, you can't, you can't fixate on not having a feeling that you, because it's impossible. We can't talk ourselves out of having a feeling and meditators cannot make their minds empty. That's not the point of these things. Right. But what we can do, I think is recognize like, Oh, I'm going in a loop. I'm going in the a negative dark side. This will not help anybody. My teammates or me, we need to find another place to put our attention right now. I right. do think mentally we've got to say that to ourselves and say, well, that's a rabbit hole. Let's not go there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, but you know, it's funny, like you talk about these kids uh, because they're, they're not, they don't have as much filter, right? So they'll really get pretty demonstrative about how they feel about themselves, right? And they're banging stuff around and yeah. slumping. And they're, some of them are quite visible about it. And um, it just makes me think like, well, who gave them the idea that they, were, that they sucked so badly? Like why, you know, because I, I don't think, because when we come out there as kids, we're just having fun until somebody tells you, oh, you're not playing yeah. or you just got promoted yeah. or look at all these numbers. And then what we do with this comparison thing is we can make a mess out of it. Yeah, and some of some of it is like you said earlier. It's just the natural, uh, manifest how it manifests naturally through competition. But yeah. there are others. The messages. One of my biggest pet peeves. One of the and you probably know this because we've talked about it is is uh, people talking about baseball as being a game of failure. I hate that. Yeah, yeah, it's a tricky thing, right? Because it doesn't. What are you going to do with that? You know, well, we still want we still want to play it. <laughs> well plus it's uh you're talking they're, they're reflecting upon b batting you know and it's like if you're only going to measure success or the the uh yeah success in this game based upon your batting average right you're really missing the point you're missing the boat here plus but that's where a lot of people are at and let's face it these top guys are being paid plus five million or minus five million dollars based on a few digits on these yeah. scores and so it's hard not to get sucked into that at every level of game you know us guys who no one's getting paid no one's even in the stands probably for most of these games there's a handful yeah. of friends and yet people are you'd think they had big time big league contracts sometimes the way they get on themselves is hilarious <laughs> yeah well i had so. a, a college coach tell me really put a different perspective on it for me where he said like he said, because his son is also on my son's team, and he said that, you know, we spend all of this time focused on hitting. Mm. He goes, and that's the least amount of thing that you'll do in any game. He's like, he, he's like, but you, you're going to, you're going to get a, a lot of opportunity to, to feel the ball and to throw a ball. And, and you can do that, uh, you know, with a lot more consistency and accuracy. Right. But we yeah. spend very little time on it in practice. And we, we put all this focus on hitting. He said, but the reality is, he said, is once that ball, I mean, once that bat connects with that ball, he said, it's out of your hands at that point on where that ball is going and what's sure. going to happen with that. He's like, so you could, you could have really great hitters. They're just, and we've seen this in games. You've seen it all the time, you know, where people are just jacking the ball and, they're, and, and players are just catching them left and right. And <laughs> yeah, it's like, it doesn't make it a lesser hit. Yeah, and then yeah. you get like you get like someone, then someone else has got like three base hits from these little little bloopity bloop hits, right? <laughs> That's and so annoying. <laughs> on paper, it looks like they're hit, right and right. This is and it was a really interesting point. And that's really when I started to think about like this whole idea of baseball being a game of failure is really a flawed and in really a negative way. I mean, we're teaching that negativity is like. Well, I'm pretty good at failure, so I guess I can play baseball. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah, well, yeah, well, geez, that sounds like we're going way down a hole there. I mean, I mean, I, have a, I, I took a bat out. Uh, there's a, a 
a field over by Griffith Park here in LA, around the five freeway. Um, I was playing on somebody else's team. They asked me to come out and uh, the bat was pretty new. I was like the second AB, I crushed this ball. I mean, I hit the hell out of this thing. And then there's a, there's a marking of the ball logo on my bat. You know, like if you could read the, the brand of the balls, it's a diamond on my bat from where the print impacted my bat. And some dude in center field just put his glove up and pulled it down. I still remember hitting that ball. I still remember how good that felt. Like to me, that was a great hit for me, mm -hmm. even though I got nothing for it, th yeah. theoretically. But I, the hell no, was I going to start like feeling bad about myself and banging my helmet and stuff and yeah. thinking I shouldn't be on this team? I, I smoked that ball. And yeah. that guy did his job. So tip your hat yeah. to him. He did his job. What the hell do you expect him to do? Yeah. You know, let it drop in front of him to make you feel good? That's not the game. You'd, <laughs> right, you right. Feel, you'd, you'd feel like a, an idiot standing on first base because, like, well, I'm kind of here by accident. <laughs> so, right. so well, yeah. I think there is, go ahead. No, that reminds me of uh, uh, when I was in high school. I, I transferred to uh, uh, I transferred schools in 11th grade to, to play baseball. Mm -hmm. And I remember my very first at bat because I really wanted to do well, right? Because, and, it, and it's one of my, it's, it's a one, one at bat that I feel very proud of, but I struck out. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I'm proud of it is because the first two strikes, I hit a mile foul. Mm -hmm. Right. Get, is that, yeah, yeah. He yeah. struck me out, but I felt like I showed my coach and my team what I'm capable of. Right. And. Right. And I and I and I have a strikeout on it was a strike. It wasn't thank goodness it wasn't a backwards K, but um, I swung at it. But I walked off feeling pretty pretty badass because I hit those. You should. Were, if they had been straight, they, they were gone. You know. Right, right. It's, the difference between what we're calling we're labeling success and failure are these tiny degrees. That's right. And and when someone pumps their ego to the ceiling over these wins that's probably not really the best thing to do because they're probably also then prone to throwing themselves in the gutter when they when it's a foul ball instead of a fair ball and the difference of where you made contact on that ball to shoot it up in the air off to the side is mm -hmm. just minuscule you couldn't have done better right you, yeah and, and my buddy uh you know you know that i hit with he's always talking about hey we got to find victories all day long you know he, he totally rejects this game as a game of failure he doesn't buy any of that either and I think it's right to not go there. It's it, statistically, it's easy to say, well, if you hit the ball a third of the time, you're a superstar, but and therefore way to that or 70%. But he's always talking about how, Hey man, if, if the situation calls for a certain kind of swing and that player brings that kind of swing, then, and, and they happen to foul it or they, they swing and a miss, but they took the right kind of swing, right? Are we trying to, do we need a single right now uh, behind the runner? Or do we need to drive this thing deep into the field? And if that batter knows what they're doing, their team should, it should, should have confidence. Like you said, like, hey, I know at least I can rely on that guy. I trust letting that guy go out there and be on my team mm -hmm. because he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Right. And sometimes I think if we're not – if we're already talking to ourselves too much in the head and making up all these stories, we're not present to what is the situation now on the field and what do I need to contribute to my team, right. not to just pump up my ego. You know, it's a problem if somebody – what's really needed is a single and some guys swing it for the fence, you know, and sometimes they might hit it and it's great and it helps. It's one run, but maybe that just says to the rest of the team, like this guy doesn't really, he's not really plugged into the team sport. Right. So, yeah, I think there's so many ways to identify. So I think you know, we're talking about a lot of like how to keep yourself out of the, these rabbit holes, right? Like right. have a persona, keep bring yourself back into it recognizing there's all this noise in your head that's not going to help you and identifying all these little victories throughout and saying, I got that right. I got that. It's a battle. You know, that pitcher, that pitcher wants your head, man. He'd yeah. be happy to, he'd be happy to hit you. He wants to sit your ass down and make you feel this big. That's his job. And it's my job to hit his stuff. And it's, and it's a battle. So let's do that. Let's just say, okay, this is what it is. Yeah. Right. And so, okay. Cool. I took his ball, it, you know, his, his outside slider. Good. Right. I, I fouled the hell out of, out of his fastball. Okay. I'm still in this game instead of right. thinking, Oh man, it's, well, here's the count and they're going to get me and da, da, da. Right. I'm behind, I'm behind the count. Now I'm going to have to deal with a curveball. <laughs> yeah. It's like, Hey, you got the count that deep, you know, right. it's just, 
yeah, I think these are ways to not have oneself start mentally checking out of the game and taking yourself out. And then when you do, your your body posture absolutely displays it. The other the defense picks your ass apart, or the other you know, the opposing team knows that you're not no longer in the game, and uh, and your teammates don't really want you on their team because they're all trying to keep their heads up instead of down. We're all have, it's very easy to have your momentum momentum go down, right. So we're all trying to work like crazy to keep it up and keep, you know, seeing the next pitch and doing what you can. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I think it's, it's a, it's a, it's a good mental flip. And I think, I think the best players obviously are doing it or they wouldn't be playing. Right. Well, and uh, I was laughing because uh, uh, the two guys that have been commenting are uh, pitchers. While you're talking, uh, uh, Eddie Lamar. Do, 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 like do I have their mentality right or not? <laughs> I'd like for you to meet Eddie sometime. He's in uh, uh, near New York City area, long I think maybe Long Island or mm-hmm. somewhere like that. Uh, but he's about you know he's uh, 64, 65 years old, and he still stays in pretty good shape with pitching. But he was saying that he goes, uh, it's hard for me to read the comments because of how they're how they do it on Facebook. It says, uh, I feel that the professional manner in which I carry myself on the field and how I react to the different situations has earned me the respect, not only from players, but also from umpires. It's been true as a pitcher and getting a little extra size strike zone. Um, and as a manager with umpire calls too, you know, and so, which I couldn't agree more with that. I mean, but that that's, you know, like uh, in speaking to pitchers here, do you, do you ever see like kids like when they're leading off and they're reaching back toward first? Mm-hmm. Sure. What are, they, what are they telling the pitcher? Yeah, I want to get back and get safe. Yeah, like I'm, telling you, I'm afraid of you. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to keep some insurance policy. Get your arms out in front of you. You know, don't, you know, and, you know, what you really believe is going to manifest in your person, right? Yeah. So I think, you know, just because I wanted to give everybody some takeaways. And that's one that I would give is like, pay attention to what your body's doing out in that field. And, you need to be carrying yourself like if you believe that you're i just call it you know kind of badass mentality if you know that you're you deserve to be out there then if you feel your your body posture start to slump you know uh get those shoulders back you know get your core tight again you know uh get i I tell my kid uh, my son when he's up at the plate that you give the death stare to that picture you know you (laughs) yeah know with your eyes and your body that you're going to take his head off if he lets you Mm-hmm. you know just bring it you know and i said if you strike out then all you, you walk off say all right you got me this time but i'm gonna right. get a chance and baseball is what i say is baseball is it where you look i'm 41 you're 51 baseball's a game of many 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 chances right sure so you're sure. gonna get another chance i mean you and i are playing it well into our adult life so i remind my kids my the t- my team my little team that all the time baseball's a game of many chances so he gets he if he wins that one walk off you know staring at him <laughs> you know <laughs> continue that death stare so you got me on this yeah. one better hope i don't get to face you again yeah, yeah you got to keep that up it's it's, right. it's a battle it's a battle i mean yeah. it's a win-lose yeah. proposition so and what's one thing one... you would tell people though what what's one thing you would uh, before we, the, uh, the biggest thing you'd want everybody the viewers to know about um like kind of where your mind is with this topic I mean, I I guess I come back to this one of just recognizing that the mind is going to make up all kinds of stories and usually most of it's false. It just does that. It manufactures like, you know, our minds are always um, filling like full narrative. They're they're completing different stories, right? They're filling in the scenario. They're finishing off the movie in our heads, right? Mm -hmm. They're already deciding how this is going to go. They're going to want me on this team or not, or I'm contributing or not. Like we're always filling in the blanks and it's like, just to notice that that it just cook it up true or not. And like you said, it's nobody's business what you think of you. And, and, and let, if it's really a problem, let them tell you it's a problem. Don't decide it's one, change your body posture, check out mentally, not be in the game and then play like you're not in the game. And then what comes true is, Hey, uh, why don't you sit down for a few innings? Cause this other guy can take your job better, you know? Right. So I think it's just rec- just, just knowing like, look, Everybody's mind invents this stuff. Most of it's not true. It's kind of toxic. Here it goes. It's chirping away. 
Okay, thank you very much. Quiet down. Yeah. Which is what some people call a mindfulness practice. Right. You know, med meditators don't empty their minds or, or stop their thoughts. They just keep noticing this stuff arises and they say, thank you very much. See you later. And I'm going to quiet back down. That's and right. some people, some people can quiet down a little more easily than others. But ultimately, whether you tell that voice to take a hike, you know, five times a minute or 60 times a minute, you just keep telling it. Thank you very much. Now shut up. Right. I'm playing ball. I'm rolling my eyes because I'm like, there's a whole other topic we could spend an hour on. Yeah. <laughs> if your audience will stick around. Well, I mean, we probably need to go, but it's just, just this idea of, um, you know, uh, oh crap, it left my, it left my mind. Um, shoot. Something about emptying your mind, I think I was saying. Um, yeah, I can't remember, but it's another, it's, oh, it's, it's this idea that, uh, you know, we, we, we have that Yogi Bear quote that says, you know, uh, that's kind of that funny quote of baseball's 90% mental and the other half is physical, right? Yeah. And one thing that really irritates me, because you said that, uh, you know, it's easier for some than others. Well, it's, a, it's easier for some, it's easier for the people that practice it. And we spend right. all this time in baseball focusing on the 10% that it is, which is the physical and we don't hardly teach uh, the mental game or, or techniques for the mental game at all, you know. Right. And so if you really, you know, uh, anybody for me and you or anybody watching this, if you really want to, you know, kind of master that part of the game, you're going to have to practice. I mean, plain and simple. You know? Yeah, I wonder if anybody has comments about what they do to either stay in the game or not let themselves backslide into these negative holes. Um, I'd be curious to because yeah. er, er, most people who, who stay in anything, especially a game like this where it's obvious what your performance is, I think they've developed techniques to keep themselves mentally not from sliding off, you know, hitting the guardrails too hard. Yeah, um, because if, if you're doing that. It's just, it's too much work. It's too much effort to, to feel, to find, to pump yourself back up and go out and take another beating, Yeah, you know? So I think, I think good competitors aren't beating themselves up yeah. so much. Well, yeah. I'm pretty sure too, like the professional teams have a, a mental health professional that travels with them, I believe. Oh, sure they do. And, and look, some of those guys are out of their minds. I mean, they have all kinds of, they were raised in very toxic uh, coaching environments and they think they suck and they're just, they got a lot of talent and they're whipping themselves every inning of the game. There are tortured guys out there making tons of money. And there are other ones that had really supportive coaching and they're emphasizing their positive and all that. And there's some who had to, went through periods of that, you know, and got out of that or learned techniques and, some who go to therapy and some who meditate and some who, you know, drink after every game. I mean, there's a million ways people are managing these things. Everybody, we're all managing this stuff. It's just, right. what are we using? And right. how, sustain, how sustainable are these choices? Like, will they, will they really work for you or will they end up doing something really stupid and regrettable? Maybe um, it's hard to say. But I think if, for those of us who are playing, you know, later in life or older or whatever, but are old, whatever, you want, whatever that means, whatever age range that is, you know, um, you're, you're doing it for yourself. Most likely you don't cause you love the game. Right. And so find a way you can enjoy it and keep having fun with it yeah. and not, and not get all, I mean, I see guys get so serious about it. I'm like, okay, I know you gotta be in the persona to have that killer instinct and to do your best, but you know, getting down on yourself and everybody else is not going to raise people's performance. Um, I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I, I so appreciate you doing this. Uh, this is oh, oh, yeah. long overdue. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> my technological uh, difficulties mostly. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, Here we are. I uh, wanted to show people the, the picture. See that? Oh, yeah. We got we got matching, uh, matching yeah. Dodger Stadium. So they just pick up one of Douglas's many talents. Photography, apparently, was the hidden one. All it is, hold up my camera and, and push the button at the right sunset. And oh, then, uh, Josh, I appreciate you sending me this print. Uh, it's in my office here. It's awesome. Uh, so that was, that was a good game. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. And yeah. I think you also told me, too, that the sky's that color because of the smog. Yeah, I think that's true. It, it gets pretty orange here, yeah, because of our <laughs> pollution. But 
Hey man, it, it makes a great shot. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we got a good picture out of it, right? Um, oh yeah. Yeah. We have fun. Uh, but thanks for having me on. Uh, I really uh, applaud yeah. what you're doing. Uh, you got a good following going and, and all kinds of people are, are coming together. Maybe wouldn't any other way. And, and uh, yeah. that's one of the great things about the internet is we can all find our tribe or people we like to hang out with our interests and yeah. um, they don't always have to be in your geography or whatever and feel good ideas. And yeah, you know, it's great. So, well, great, I, great job, Josh. Appreciate you doing this. Well, thank you. And um, one thing I would ask you to do if you, if you uh, either uh, tonight or tomorrow or something, um, <clears throat> you could just peruse through the comments and maybe respond to a couple of them just in case I know some uh, one or two more uh, have come in and I just want to make sure, sure those people aren't ignored. Um, and, um, sure. and also too, just, just it generates good dialogue. But uh, if you wouldn't mind doing that, and then uh, other than that, man, um, I know we're, we're, you and I are going to be having many more conversations anyway, but uh, maybe I can have you back on at some point. Sure. Yeah, no problem. Happy to do it. Um, so keep up all the great work, and uh, thanks for everybody for tuning in and, and uh, being part of this. It's, it's a really cool thing. And Josh, you're such a big-hearted, generous guy, man. You're, you're just always available to do cool stuff. and. Uh, so we all thank you and, and for all the cool videos you're getting up there. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for being here. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'll we'll talk to you later. All right. See you, everybody. Uh, so that was Douglas Evans. Uh, uh, like I said, uh, one of my best friends in the world, um, uh, friendship that I never, that I didn't even anticipate, you know, but I guess that's how they all are really. Um, but, um, super fun dude. I uh, love hanging out with him. Um, uh, love talking to him and hopefully, Sorry, I had the cabinet door open. Uh, hopefully, we'll get him back on here for you guys. But a uh, very inspirational dude. Um, uh, really, again, probably uh, probably uh, he's going to get on me for saying it again. But really, it was my inspiration for doing a lot of this stuff and, and getting him back into the game as heavily as I have. So I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Eddie Lamar uh, and Jeremiah Batla uh, making some of the comments. Uh, my my uh be uh my uh um uh, msbo world series teammate michael mccallini from uh tulsa oklahoma uh is in the house watching and then of course uh several other people appreciate you guys um just a reminder uh we're, we're i got a, a lineup of people coming on uh the next one will be jeremiah battles we're going to be talking about pitching at 40. so um uh he's an impressive dude that i met here recently and he's part of our group so Tune in for that. Also, I have um, Kevin Lam uh, Lamardine. Uh, Lam uh, I think they call him Lambo. Uh, I can't say his last name, but uh, I was just recently on a podcast that he did, and a very fascinating guy up in Seattle area, uh, what, or I think it's Seattle area, and um, uh, we're going to have him on to talk about the podcast as well as his co-host. Al Garza, but we aren't going to talk about the podcast. We are going to talk about gloves, you know, so uh, finding the right glove and, and things like that. So anyways, guys, appreciate you being here and uh, I will uh, see you next Sunday night and, you know, keep plugging away. Keep training. Take care. Bye.